HI16 property plant and equipment, revaluation model, surpluses and deficits. This is a summary of the main content of I16. Accounting treatment comprises recognition, measurement and disclosure. This presentation focuses on measurement, subsequent measurement, the revaluation model and specifically where there's increases and or decreases in revalued amount regarding the same asset. Paragraph 39. If an asset's carrying amount is increased as a result of a revaluation, the increase shall be recognized in other comprehensive income and accumulate in equity under the heading of revaluation surplus. However, the increase shall be recognized in profit or loss to the extent that it reverses a revaluation decrease of the same asset previously recognized in profit or loss. Paragraph 40. If an asset's carrying amount is decreased as a result of a revaluation, the decrease shall be recognized in profit or loss. However, the decrease shall be recognized in other comprehensive income to the extent of any credit balance existing in the revaluation surplus in respect of that asset. The decrease recognized in other comprehensive income reduces the amount accumulated in equity under the heading of revaluation surplus. Let's illustrate that. When I have an asset and that asset's carrying amount is increased, I have a revaluation surplus. So from a carrying amount, upwards revaluation, first time revaluation on this asset, you'll take the surplus through OCI in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, and you'll accumulate an equity balance in the statement of changes in equity. That is what you've been doing so far from a first-year perspective. Now things are going to change. On this same asset where you first had a revaluation surplus, you now have a subsequent revaluation resulting in a deficit. The asset is valued downwards. What do you do? You first have to credit the asset. Its value has decreased. So your credit goes to the asset account. Where do you take the debit? You first reverse the existing surplus available on this asset. So you'll first use up or realize that surplus with a debit through OCR to clear the surplus balance. And if the deficit is even more than that, you'll take the rest of the deficit as a debit entry through profit or loss in the statement of profit or loss. Very important, you can only utilize the surplus of the asset if it's a surplus relating to that specific asset. You can't... Um, <clears throat> You can't, sorry, utilize a deficit of one asset against the surplus of another asset. If your first revaluation is a deficit, that deficit will be taken as an expense through profit or loss. So you will credit the asset account and you will debit revaluation deficit through profit or loss. If you now, with a subsequent revaluation on the same asset, have a surplus, this will happen. Your asset will now increase again. So you have a debit against the asset account. Where do you take the credit? You first reverse any previous deficits recognized in profit or loss. So your first credit entry will get go against profit or loss, revaluation surplus, other income. If your surplus is, is even more than the previous deficit 
only once you've reversed the previous deficit do you move into a surplus situation where you recognize a credit revaluation surplus through OCI and that portion that's recognized as a credit through OCI will accumulate again in equity under the heading revaluation surplus. Very important with transactions like this, you need to keep track of the balance on your revaluation surplus account so that you can recognize subsequent deficit deficits first against the surplus before you take it to profit or loss. Similarly, you have to keep track of all previous deficits, but there you do not have an account that you can refer to. Deficits were firstly recognized in profit or loss as an expense. It doesn't accumulate anywhere. So you need to keep track of those previous deficits so that subsequent surpl surpluses can first reverse those deficits before you move into OCI.